Hey everyone, Star Sage here, and welcome to the start of a new series. Dive in with me as we embark on a journey through the mystical tales of Aragon, the legendary Inheritance Cycle series. Packed with dynamic characters and intricate lore, we're kicking things off by delving deep into the life of Brom. In the vast tapestry of allegation history, few tales capture the essence of tragedy, love and redemption like that of Brom Holcomb's son. Brom's life was intertwined with pivotal events that would truly shape the fate of the realm. Brom was born and raised in the unique and isolated city of Kwasta, located near the sea, far south of Carver Hall. Kwasta was a city steeped in its own customs and superstitions, thanks to its proximity to the spine, which left it remote to other locations throughout the empire. It was in Kwasta that Brom's journey as one of the legendary dragon riders would begin. In the early days of his life, Brom hailed from a lineage of illuminators. His mother, Nelda, and father, Holcomb, instilled in him the values of knowledge and tradition. In what can only be described as a defining moment in Brom's life, at the tender age of ten, an Aquamarine dragon hatched for him. This bond, one that would be unbreakable and shape the course of his life, led him to christen his dragon with the name Sephira. With a dragon by his side, Brom's path led him to Illyria, which would later be known as Urubane. Here, under the guidance of wise mentors, Brom would hone his skills and embrace his role as a dragon rider. Transitioning from Quasta to Illyria wasn't without its challenges for Brom. The city's residents and his fellow students often found amusement in Brom's customs, such as knocking on door frames three times before entering or leaving a room. This was a clear testament to the pluralities of his hometown due to its isolation. With time, and the relentless teasing from fellow students, Brom shed these habits to better blend into his new environment and friends. In Illyria, Brom would meet and be guided by his mentors, Aramis the Elf and Gladder the Golden Dragon. Amidst rigorous training sessions with his mentors, Brom forged an unexpected bond and adoration towards a fellow student named Morzan. Despite the age difference, Brom was drawn to Morzan's confidence and strength. This idealisation of Morzan became so profound that Brom allowed himself to be overshadowed and bossed around, constantly placed himself second to Morzan's whims. Morzan revelled in his adoration, using it to manipulate and control the younger rider. Aromis, with his depth of wisdom and keen insight, discerned the toxic dynamics of this relationship. He observed Morzan's escalating malevolence, and the wise old mentor even contemplated separating the two, but for reasons of his own, he refrained. During the later stages of Brom's training, Galbatorix began his rebellion against the Dragon Riding Order. Initially, Brom joined his mentors in New Dewald and Vardin, the enchanted forest home of the elves. After hearing the news of the true danger facing the Order, Brom heeded the call to duty and joined the defence of Throneguard, the island home of the Riders. It was in the heat of battle on Throneguard that Brom's world would crumble. The very friend he had once revered betrayed him in the cruelest way possible. Morzan murdered his dragon, Sephira. The weight of this loss was immeasurable, made even more crushing with the loss of Brom's sword and better. Grief stricken and lost, Brom's world crumbled around him. The bond between a dragon and its rider is profound and sacred. Tavlat Sephid was a devastation beyond words, but from the ashes of his despair rose a burning determination. Brom vowed to avenge Sephira's death, and to destroy Morzan. His once unwavering admiration for Morzan was now replaced with a vengeance that burned brighter than any flame. Aromis once described this transformation, saying, Brom's love for Morzan was giving way to hate, like a candle before an inferno. Fueled by his newfound purpose, Brom enacted a campaign to resist Galbatorix's new empire and gain vengeance against the one who killed his beloved Sephira. Taking advantage of the prevailing chaos, Brom orchestrated the creation of the Vardin, a united front that brought together rebels resisting Galbatorix's oppressive reign. With his diplomacy, Brom won the allegiance of the elves and dwarves, even persuading King Hrothgar to permit the Vardin to set up their base of operations in Farvindor. Entrusting the Vardin's leadership to the competent Weldon, Brom embarked on a personal mission to seek vengeance against the Forsworn. He showcased remarkable efficacy in this pursuit, taking down eight of the 13 Forsworn members, personally dispatching three. Unknowingly, Brom was aided by the Elden Army in the Vault of Souls, 
which many outsiders believed was Ron being inherently lucky. During this time, rumours began to circulate about a shadowy female assassin known as the Black Hand. The Black Hand was undertaking the Empire's covert operation, and it soon became evident that her allegiance lay solely with Morzan. Resolute in his quest to eliminate her, Brom cunningly infiltrated Morzan's fortress, identifying vulnerabilities in the intricate web of protective wards, and managed to masquerade there as a simple gardener. For his newfound position, Brom discovered that the Black Hand was in fact Morzan's wife, a woman named Selina. Through a mockery of fate, Brom and Selina grew close and fell in love. Brom shared his true identity with her, and Selina began to spy for the Varden. For three years, Brom stayed at Morzan's fortress, until he received word of a scholar discovering a secret passage leading directly inside Galbatorix's castle. Not being able to resist a chance to strike directly at Galbatorix, Brom hatched a plan to steal the three remaining dragon eggs in Alagasia, and fleeing to us help him with his task. Giad, the scholar who originally discovered the passageway, and Hefring of Furnace, a master thief. During the theft, Hefring was spooked and fled with only one of the dragon eggs. This led to a seven-month chase in which surviving members of the Forsworn and Brom trapped Hefring in an attempt to retrieve the egg first. Brom eventually caught up with Hefring in Gilead, but was beaten at Twit by Morzan. Unknown to Brom, during this time period, Selina had fled from Morzan's fortress in secret, which resulted in Morzan believing Brom was responsible for her disappearance. This knowledge greatly worried Brom, but served to give him the strength to best and eventually kill Morzan, and claim his sword as his home. Truly worried about Selina, Brom stashed the egg where he knew Giad would find it, which led to Giad believing Brom had died. He then rushed to Morzan's fortress, where he arrived mere hours after Selina had died. It was only after inve- Brom investigated her death, he realised the true tragedy of events. Selina had been pregnant with his son. In an effort to save the child, she had fled to Carver Hall to give birth in secrecy. Realising his bittersweet victory, Brom had the foresight, despite his grief, that the egg would eventually hatch and someone would need to train the new rider. Brom found refuge in the village of Carver Hall, donning the cloak of a simple storyteller. He blended into the rhythms of the village life. His refuge in Carver Hall served two purposes. Firstly, it was a safe place in which he could wait for the egg to hatch, but it also meant he could stand watch over his son Aragon, who he kept at a distance and kept his true parentage a secret. And that's where I'm going to end it for today, guys. This was an absolute blast learning more about Brom's backstory, and I can't wait to show you even more about him in the next episode. So please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. It really does help. And stick around for part two.